They use toilet paper as tissues like Kleenex? Totally. The only time I buy actual tissues is if I have an ongoing cold slash flu. They are softer when you're blowing your nose every 5 minutes. For sure. Only difference is toilet paper disintegrates. Great for disposal. Not so great for a nosebleed or particularly snotty blow. Unless you're nervous the loo roll will have someone else's poo particles stuck to it. Yep. Even though we have tissues in the house. I'll use either TP or napkins. In a pinch if I'm in the kitchen I'll use paper towels. But I try to do that sparingly since it's so rough. Absolutely. I blow my nose after washing my face every morning with TP. It's there. It's nice. I really only reach for actual tissues if I'm sick. Repeated TP use for the nose is tough. Ah uh, yeah. Not only do I use TP. But I tend to have a runny nose and watery eyes in the am. And in cold weather. So there's times I grab a paper towel and use that to blow my nose. Bacuase when you flush the toilet. Poop and piss particles fly everywhere. Toilet paper is stored right next to the toilet. When you use them on your face. You're basically wiping poop and piss particles all over your face. Unless you're using TP that you store in your closet or something. Then that's fine. Day to day. Sure. But if I'm sick absolutely not. I need Kleenex with aloe and VE. Or puffs plus with lotion. I've had way too many raw noses while sick to even bother with anything but the good tissues. I never grew up with tissues or napkins. I'm not sold on napkins unless it's a nice meal but tissues are necessary thing in my home. But I'm not above using toilet paper. Who slash what was your embarrassing childhood crush? The two biggest loves of my young life in the late 80s were Hamlet and the book version of Sherlock Holmes. I was super into moody unstable bad boys who were too smart for their own good and had avoidant attachment personality styles. Danny Phantom and Kevin Levin, specifically when he matured from being Ben's bully and becoming Gwen's BF so I think in Ben 10, Ultimate Alien series. I was a little kid in the late 70s when after school TV was 60s reruns. I had it bad for both Spock and Mary Ann, Gilligan's Island, at 52. Still think they both had it going on. I recently found a love letter I wrote to a snake. Yes, at 7 years old. For a brief time. I was deeply in love with an actual Indian python that I had met and carried on my shoulders at a wildlife youth event. I still remember his name but I had completely forgotten about my feelings. So maybe you can imagine my cringe level when it all came rushing back upon finding that letter. Jin from the video game Tech and LOL and Christina Ritchie in the mid-90s. I must have rewatched Casper. Now and then and Gold Diggers dozens of times. I thought she was so pretty. Edit, just remembered my love for Wayne Brady during the original run of Whose Line Is It Anyway? I used to watch it with my parents and was enamored by his talent. He was funny. He could sing. He was just so cool. Tommy Lee Jones. After watching The Fugitive. Couldn't explain it then. Can't really explain it now. I don't have a thing for older men. Southern accents. Nothing like that. But I loved him. My partner thinks it's funny that I still get enthusiastic now about how he delivered the speech about searching every hen house. Outhouse and doghouse. Why do Americans act and talk on the internet as if everyone else knows the US as well as they do? A great deal of people on Reddit that are not in the US sure as hell think they have everything here in the US figured out and they can't help but tell us every damn thing they think is wrong with our country. Yes. We definitely do have our faults. Everyone everywhere does. Constantly bitching at us about these things doesn't do one fucking thing to fix them. It's just keyboard bullying and every last person that does it needs to shut the fuck up. I think an important factor is that something like 15% of Americans have never left the state they were born in. Then backslash tilde 50% don't even have a passport and even less of those with a passport will actually end up traveling outside the country. In addition, much of the news in the US is focused on the US, global issues are often condensed into a backslash tilde 2 minute summary unless there is something unbelievably major that can add shock value and bring in viewers. Combine these facts with the US centric focus of the US school system. And you have population that is undereducated and underexposed to the wider world. Edit, fix typo. Are you talking about Reddit? Almost 50% of users on Reddit are American. Seeing as you. S has the highest percentage of Reddit users it is reasonable to post expecting mostly Americans to be reading. Also, American news and media is pretty prevalent globally. The intricacies and specifics are often not known. But the major events that dominate the news cycle in the USA are quite often known at least on a surface level throughout the world. It isn't being arrogant to assume that America has a larger global presence than most if not all other countries. Sure. You can say making that assumption while posting is silly. However, the assumption is often correct. Men who don't consider yourself alcoholic. But quit alcohol anyways. How come? For me it's more of a chore to drink than anything enjoyable. I used to drink a lot in my teens getting drunk on the weekends every chance I could. But as soon as I turned 21 it almost lost its spark after a few months. I even tried to get into nice whiskey spending hundreds of dollars getting some of the best stuff in stores but for some reason it had lost all of its appeal and I couldn't drink it without feeling like I was forcing myself to. I try it every few years to see if I'm into it again but so far. No cigars. But. I found some magical stuff that grows straight from the ground semicolon isn't a liquid. And that does the trick for me. I guess it's just in preference.
I'm not currently quitting but I've quit before. I've tried being addicted to the big three, caffeine, weed, alcohol, but I'm just not an addict. I adopt bad habits. Sure. But I just can't call myself an addict because I know deep down that it's not true. The older I get, the easier I find moderation. I also really enjoy being active and substances get in the way of that especially high calorie craft beer. I guess in short, completely quitting doesn't feel true to who I am. I love the taste of craft beer. I think getting buzzed is fun sometimes. Do I need to drink poison to have fun? Absolutely not. I think people take it too far in either direction and that's not me.